Hello everyone. Today, many of us use the plane on a regular basis. Sometimes it's just easier to get to a neighboring city by air than to drive in a car. The number of flights performed every day all over the world reached 120,000. But we still know almost nothing about how this industry works. How safe are planes, really? Is the plane as fragile as it looks? What secrets do flight attendants and pilots hide from the passengers? In today's video, we will answer all of these questions. Fasten your seatbelts and let's get it on. Bird Strikes Collisions between birds and planes will end sadly. For the birds, of course. According to statistics, only 5% of bird strikes really damage the plane. It takes a lot to take the engine out. It can withstand a collision with a bird weighing more than 7.7 .7 pounds. Could some duck break through the window and depressurize the cabin? Only in the movies, really. The aircraft windows are made of three layers of laminated acrylic and glass and can withstand the hail during a thunderstorm. There is still one problem, though. A plane that collided with a bird must return to the airport for inspection, and you'll have to wait for another flight. In North America alone, air carriers lose over $500,000 because of this. Bird Control so if birds cause damage to airlines and create a certain risk to passenger safety, then there has to be a way to keep them away from airports, right? As you can imagine, fences and barriers don't work. You have to get creative. Modern airports use complex bird control systems. For example, the Bird X Airport Bird Control System includes several devices. The Mega Blaster Pro, which scares birds away with the predator sounds and bird distress signals. And there's also special liquid with an unpleasant smell, and even a separate repeller for Canadian geese. These guys are the hardest to keep away. The safest seats. It is believed that the safest place for a car passenger is behind the driver. Does this mean that it's better to sit closer to the pilot on the plane? Actually, no. In general, the plane is one of the safest ways to travel. But if you want to play it really safe, choose a seat in the back of the aircraft. Studies show that the seats in the middle section of the plane are the most dangerous in the event of a disaster. Those in the front of the aircraft are slightly safer, and the rear ones are considered the safest. So if you suffer from aerophobia, choose the middle seat in in the back. According to crash data, they are the safest ones. Sleepy Pilots you probably think that the pilots are always focused during the flight and are afraid to be distracted from the control panel even for a minute. How do you like this fact then? According to a poll conducted by the pilots' union, more than half of the pilots sleep in the air. Moreover, out of 56% of those who admitted this, 29% said that they found the co-pilot asleep when they woke up too. This survey was conducted after it was revealed that two pilots of an Airbus passenger plane were dozing at the same time. We have to mention that over the previous two nights, these guys rested for only five hours. And this doesn't contradict the law. Good thing there's an autopilot. Lavatory. It's time to find out the answer to the delicate question. What happens to the waste in the plane toilet? Is it discharged right amidst the flight? Actually, there's an air stop valve at the bottom of the toilet to maintain the vacuum. We press a button, the shutter opens, and we hear this terrible sound. After that, the waste, together with the disinfectant liquid, goes. No, not into the airspace, but a large tank. After the flight, its contents are taken away in a special truck, so you don't have to worry about any waste from above secret bedrooms. During really long-distance flights, some of the crew are working while others are resting. But where do they do it? We'll reveal a secret. Most of the aircraft have an inconspicuous door, behind which there's a secret staircase leading to a small but comfortable bedroom. Looks cozy, a bit like a pillow fort, don't you agree? The secret door is usually located just behind the cockpit, and the bedrooms are located directly above the first-class seats. If you happen to be there, try to knock on the ceiling. Maybe they'll answer you turning off the lights. If you've traveled by plane at least once, then you know how many rules you have to follow on board the plane. 
Most of them are pretty obvious, but one thing is perplexing. Why do they turn off the lights in the cabin during takeoff and landing? Turns out that it has nothing to do with the technical features of the aircraft. Everything was designed for our safety. It takes your eyes 10 to 30 minutes to get used to the dark, and the lights are dimmed to make it easier for passengers to navigate during evacuation. In the event of an emergency landing with a power outage, you can easily find an emergency exit in the dark. That's the whole secret. Pilots and beards Beards are still trendy, but can you imagine aircraft pilots with thick facial hair? We've hardly ever seen these guys looking like lumberjacks, and for a good reason. In most countries, federal regulations require that the crew be provided with oxygen masks for altitudes above 12,500 feet. As you can imagine, it's very important that the mask fits tightly to the face, which is why pilots have to be clean-shaven. Of course, we can say that not every beard will be preventing you from using a mask, but is it worth taking such risks for the sake of looking good? Flight attendants and piloting Imagine this dire situation. Both pilots are unable to control the plane, and someone has to take over. Surely it will be the flight attendants. They're trained to land the aircraft, aren't they? Unfortunately, no. The flight attendants have their own tasks, and they don't know anything about flying the plane. In the best case scenario, someone from the crew will be able to use the radio and receive instructions from the ground, but this is unlikely to help them handle all of the buttons and levers. According to pilots, a passenger playing flight simulator is more likely to land a plane Plane. You can practice it to feel safer on board. Lightning Strike We know that a lightning strike can smash a huge tree to splinters, but in the air, the chance of being struck by lightning is much higher. Should passengers be afraid of Zeus's wrath? The experts answer, definitely not. The last plane crash caused by lightning which hit the fuel tank happened in 1967. Since then, technologies have become much more advanced. Typically, lightning strikes the sharp edge of an aircraft, such as the tip of a wing or a nose, and the current then exits through the tail. The inside of the ship is protected from the lightning, though you'll definitely never forget what you saw. Wicks on the wings from the outside, the plane seems to be arranged quite simply. A nose, a tail, and two wings. Actually, many inconspicuous but important details are hidden from us. For example, have you ever wondered what are these wicks on the wings for? These are actually not antennas for communication with the ground. As an aircraft flies through the sky, air and precipitation rub against the aircraft's skin, causing a buildup of static electricity, which can interfere with the work of a radio. Static wicks are installed to dissipate this charge. By the way, this also helps to avoid lightning strikes to some degree. Danger of Turbulence It's time to talk about the worst fear of passengers, turbulence. Dishes are shaking, luggage falls from the shelves, sometimes the lights start flickering. The plane must be in real danger at that moment, right? Well, despite all these unpleasant effects, pilots claim that a plane crash due to turbulence is an almost impossible scenario. First, the aircraft is designed to withstand even high-intensity turbulence. We usually encounter low to moderate turbulence. Second, meteorological data and airborne radar enable pilots to avoid extremely turbulent zones. But even if they get there, they're trained to control the plane in such conditions, so don't be afraid and just fasten your seatbelt. Food for the pilots the pilots and co-pilots not only have different duties and the number of stripes on their shoulder straps, they also eat different foods. We're being serious. Usually, the commander gets first-class meals, while the co-pilot has to enjoy business-class meals. But there's no discrimination in this, just another safety standard. In 1984, 120 passengers and crew of the Concorde aircraft, en route from London to New York, became victims of salmonellosis, and they all ate the same food. Since then, the pilots have been served different dishes. If one gets food poisoning, the other will be able to take control. Delicious Tomato Juice a shocking fact. According to the estimates at the German airline Lufthansa, the second most popular drink after beer among passengers is tomato juice. Many people note that it tastes better on board the plane, and scientists have found an explanation for this. Robin Dando, associate professor of food science at Cornell University, says that high decibel levels in the cabin make it difficult for us to perceive taste correctly. While the sweets taste less intense, the flavor known as umami seems stronger. All we have 
have to do now is to find out whether this rule works for pineapple pizza. Oxygen mask. Can you guess why there are oxygen masks on board the plane but no oxygen tanks? Well, the answer is simple. The breathing gas is produced by a chemical reaction between sodium chlorate and iron oxide. These substances are stored in a special generator. When you tug the mask, you let them mix. The combustion begins, releasing the oxygen and a large amount of heat, which is why you can experience the burning smell, and the chamber above gets very hot. But it is absolutely safe, so you can breathe calmly for 15 minutes. That's how the oxygen masks approximately last for. You don't have to worry about this either. That's enough time for the pilot to bring the plane to a safe altitude. Blue seats. By the way, do you travel a lot? If so, then you probably use different airlines and might have noticed one detail. Each carrier has blue seats on board. Many people think that this color has become universal because it hides dirt well. But that'd be a strange approach, wouldn't you agree? In fact, companies care about your well-being. The specific deep shade of blue produces calming chemicals in the body, which reduce the chance of plane-attributed stress and create a sense of well-being. Psychologists also claim that it slows down the heart rate and breathing. In general, if you sleep well on the plane, it's probably because of the blue color. Round windows. Sometimes you can ask a stupid question like this. Why aren't the windows of the plane square, like in an apartment? Perhaps the passengers would feel more comfortable this way. Here is how aviation history explains this. Square windows were even trendy for a while. They were used until jetliners emerged, and two of them fell apart right in the air just because of the wrong shape of the windows. The thing is, the sharp corners of the windows are weak points where the stress is focused. At high altitudes and speeds, this is critical, which is why the windows have become rounded. They're resistant to deformation and less prone to cracks and breaks. The dirtiest thing. Let's play a quiz. You need to guess what the dirtiest thing on a plane is. We'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. And now, Let's see what microbiologists have to say. A group of scientists visited 26 airports, examined the cabins of the airliners, and found out that the dirtiest place on the plane are the folding tables. Yeah, it's rather unpleasant that the thing that we eat from has eight times more germs than the toilet flush button. The second dirtiest thing is the upper ventilation hole, then the flush button, and the seatbelt buckle closes the leaderboard. So, we recommend you to take some hand sanitizer with you. The important thing is to not forget about the allowed volume of liquid on board. Durable tires. The very fact that a huge aircraft can fly in the air is already pretty amazing. But you know what's even more amazing? This vehicle lands using several small wheels, and they can withstand an enormous load. While a sharp stone can sometimes puncture a car tire, the wheels of an airplane can't afford such weakness. Each tire is capable of supporting up to 84,000 pounds, and hitting the ground at a speed of over 170 miles per hour more than 500 times before it needs replacement. The main secret of this durability is pressure. Aircraft tires generally operate at pressures up to 200 psi, about six times that of a car. Flying with one engine. Good news, you could forget those scary movie scenes where a plane crashed due to an engine failure. What will actually happen in case of an emergency like that? The aircraft will simply continue flying at a lower altitude and at a lower speed. As the fuel burns, it will become lighter and will be able to climb to a higher altitude. Though the pilot will in any case have to look for a place to make an emergency landing. But what if the engine breaks down somewhere over the Pacific Ocean? This is also not a cause for concern. According to the pilots, there are almost no routes in the world where the plane would be so far from an airport that it wouldn't have enough time to reach it. Airplane Trails this question mainly bothers little kids, but not all adults know the correct answer to it. Moreover, many conspiracy theorists believe that the white trails the planes leave in the air are the chemicals that the secret government is poisoning us with. Mind if we destroy this theory with science? Cloud trails are essentially just condensation. It forms when hot and humid exhaust fumes from an aircraft collide with cold air from the upper atmosphere. Let's put it simply. You see the same effect when you exhale air in the cold. By the way, these trails are not always visible either. It all depends on the temperature of the atmosphere and the level of humidity. Black Box 
Many people know about the existence of a black box on board, but not everyone knows the name of this device is actually quite misleading. Yes, the flight recorder looks like a small box with a device for registering and storing flight information inside, only it's not black at all. This name has stuck with the device since its invention. Black boxes were developed in Australia in the early 1950s, and back then, they were really painted black. This solution turned out to be quite impractical, though. In the event of a disaster, the recorder was very difficult to find. Today, fire-resistant and shock-proof boxes are painted orange, and sometimes they're cylindrical and even round. But for some reason, the name has not changed at all. The Consequences of Hail You probably realize that hail for a person on the ground and hail for an airplane traveling at a speed of 500 to 550 miles per hour at an altitude of 6 miles have pretty different consequences. Well, now you can see how significant this difference is. This poor plane was hit by hail the size of a chicken egg in the sky over Istanbul. And the most surprising thing is that this is not critical damage for an airplane. Yes, the pilots had to land the plane in conditions of poor visibility due to strong cracks on the glass, but the aircraft remained intact. As for the destroyed nose, it is just a cone. It's made of plastic, so it takes damage from hail. The only consequence of losing the cone is high levels of noise, so don't worry too much. Unlocking the toilet from the outside We'll give you some useful advice. If you'd like to go to the toilet with your smartphone and stay there for a good 40 minutes, then you shouldn't try this on a plane. The fact is that a flight attendant may unexpectedly drop in. These guys, like the police and special services, have a tool to open the toilet doors from the outside. It's necessary to help a person in case of emergency. What if he can't go out because he's fainted or went into a diabetic coma? So don't stay there for too long to avoid embarrassing situations. Weapons on the plane The list of things allowed to be carried on board the plane is extremely short. You can't even take water with you, and carrying weapons is out of the question, even if it is a souvenir sword or training nunchucks. However, there is an exception to this rule. There are weapons in the cockpit of almost every aircraft. Now, of course, the pilots aren't armed with machine guns in case of any riots like in the Con Air movie. We are talking about an axe. The Federal Aviation Administration obliges to equip every aircraft that can carry more than 19 passengers with an emergency axe. Naturally, it's intended to be used in the event of a fire, but it's better not to mess with the pilots anyway. Hold on a second. Do you want to see some crazy stories from real life? Nothing dull, only action, only adventures, chases and fights, love confessions and sudden betrayals. Don't believe us? <laughs> well, follow the link and see for yourselves. Our animation channel Private Diary reveals the deepest secrets. Don't forget to subscribe.